everyone, welcome back to Skincare 101 with me, Afia Segaf. Masih ingat kan kalau beberapa saat yang lalu saya buka skincare Q&A di Instagram saya dan juga di Instagramnya Female Daily Network. Nah, untuk menjawab pertanyaan-pertanyaan kamu seputar skincare, saya nggak sendirian, tapi saya kedatangan tamu. Tamunya spesial banget karena all the way from France, jadi jauh-jauh dari Perancis nih. Dan ngobrol-ngobrol saya tuh seru banget karena kita ngejawab berbagai macam pertanyaan seputar skincare yang udah sering banget kalian tanyain. Dan akan dijawab selengkap-lengkapnya, sedetail-detailnya sampai kalian pasti jadi ngerti dan dapat pencerahan banget. Oh iya, ini interviewnya diadakannya dalam bahasa Inggris. Jadi kalau misalnya kamu pengen lihat subtitle dalam bahasa Indonesianya, jangan lupa klik yang ada tulisan sisi di bawah ya. Nah, penasaran gimana skincare Q&A-nya? Tonton terus ya. Nah, kan aku sempat share ya di Instagram bahwa video skincare 101 akan kedatangan tamu spesial. Nah, kali ini tamu spesialnya udah ada di sini di samping saya. Jadi langsung aja ya saya perkenalkan. I have Cyril Talinch here with me. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour, selamat siang. <laughs> Thank you for being with me today at the Skincare 101. I'm very happy to have you here. So before we begin with the questions and answers, I would like to maybe ask you, because you are the CEO and founder of Novexpert, right? How did you have an idea or what made you create this brand? Okay, um, it's a long story. I'm going to be short. Okay. The first motivation of making that brand is that I had some personal uh, skin problem. Oh, okay. Uh, two skin problem, acne and eczema at the same time. You can wow. imagine. Yeah. So I studied by myself to find my own solution, mm -hmm. and uh, I discovered that uh, natural molecule instead of chemical could be very helpful and efficient for the skin. I see. But also. I wanted to create my own world, having a company with nice people, mm -hmm. like Utopia, you see. <laughs> and uh, I had the possibility to make companies with people I love. Oh, okay. And uh, to make a new style of management, mm -hmm. to work, but in a quiet and a nice atmosphere. Okay. As an example, in our company, we 40% of our employees work at home. Oh, really? Yeah, because wow. of the children. Uh, you can have a nap whenever you want. You know, we have <laughs> in the office. For, in the office, absolutely. Wow. And I wanted to work in the middle of nature. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to tell to your boss, I want yeah. to work in the nature. Or, or so, I want to take a nap now. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> it's even more difficult. Yeah. It's good to f to make your world like you want. Yeah, yeah. So that is the second motivation. And while you create the world that you love, you also create great products that help many Hello. women achieve great skin, right? Thank you very much. I'm going to surprise you in our company. We are not making any market study. Oh, yeah? We are, go we are making the product for us. Wow. And okay. if people share the same taste of us, fantastic. Okay? So since that company has been created by doctors uh -huh. and I, we make product because we believe in what we do. So we are not looking to make product to satisfy all the planet. Right. We are making product we believe in. And after, if people have the same taste, it's fantastic. Wow, okay. That's very interesting. Yes. Very different from yeah. other beauty companies. <laughs> Tapi sekarang ini kan pasti kalian juga pengen tahu kira-kira pertanyaan mana sih yang dijawab sama saya, sama Cyril hari ini. Karena kita kan udah buka skincare Q&A ini. Nah, kita mulai aja ya sesi Q&A-nya. Sebelumnya saya mau ngucapin terima kasih banyak yang udah submit pertanyaan ke Instagram saya dan juga Instagramnya Female Daily Network. Kita tuh terima 200 pertanyaan. Jadi kebayang ya banyak banget. Dan tapi unfortunately kita tentunya nggak bisa jawab semua. Kita udah pilihin. Tapi yang kita pilih ini adalah pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang memang banyak dari kalian yang menanyakan gitu. Jadi mudah-mudahan sih lumayan banyak kali ini yang uh, cukup puas karena pertanyaannya terjawab. So the first one is. Uh, my skin has erythema or redness. Is it safe to use vitamin C? If yes, what's the percentage that is safe? Now, this is a very interesting question mm -hmm. because there is a urban legend mm -hmm. that vitamin C might be irritating for the skin. Yeah. But 
it is why people are believing that. Because in the history of the skincare, the only way in the past to stabilize vitamin C yeah. was to use an acid pH right. for the base. And when you put vitamin C in a very acid pH of the base, then vitamin C was stable. Okay. But this is the past. Mm. And this was explaining why some people using this type of product had some irritation. Oh, you know I what I mean? See. It's not due to the vitamin C, but it's, it's due to the, the pH of the product. I okay. See. So, uh, for example, in our vitamin C booster, the pH of our booster is exactly the same as your skin pH. Okay. Oh, okay. So to answer to that uh, gentleman or women, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, vitamin C can be used on erythema mm -hmm. without any problem under the condition under the condition that the pH of the product has the same pH of your skin. Right. Are right. difficult to check yeah. because it's not written yeah. in the box. Yeah. Ah, that's the problem. The okay. best way, online, you send an email to the brand and say, look, I've seen that you have a product with vitamin C. Could you write the pH? Send me the information of the pH. Right. Alors, on our side, the vitamin C booster pH is about 4.7. Right. Which, which is, is the pH of the skin, not 5.5. Yeah, this is very interesting. Tadi sebelum kita syuting, kita ngobrol-ngobrol dan kata Cyril bilang kalau selama ini kan kita taunya pH kulit kita tuh 5,5. But that's not true. So it's no. not 5.5. No, no, I, I don't do. know why a lot of people <laughs> think it is 5.5, but the real pH of the skin is 4.7, and I uh, to provide to your people the yeah. official publication. Right. Okay, online. The com yeah. They will be able to download the publication. Yeah, we will definitely be interested to read that. Anyway, that question was asked by Hime Aiko Dito 1228 RLD Laputri. Kurang lebih pertanyaan sama. So the second question yeah. is still about vitamin C. Yeah. And many people ask this. I cannot na name them one by one because there are too many. What ingredients are we not supposed to use together with vitamin C? Because people heard that you're not supposed to mix niacinamide with vitamin C. Again, it's because in the past, most of the products had an acid pH uh -huh. and many molecules cannot uh, live in a very acid pH, okay. okay? But if you have a normal pH of your base with vitamin C, there is no big deal to mix with vitamin C. Usually, it's not so good to mix vitamin B mm -hmm. and vitamin C because a vitamin C is not stable in the presence of vitamin C. So, for example, if you want to apply a vitamin B product, you apply at night, and after the vitamin C product, the day, okay? But after, no big deal to mix vitamin C with many, many other ingredients under the condition that the pH of the base is more or less the same pH of your skin. Okay. Okay? Sorry, so you re recommend using vitamin B at the different time? Yeah, uh, at the different time C. than vitamin C. It's okay. not contra contradictory, but it's just problem of unstability. Okay. That's it. Okay. So okay. it's okay to use it on the same day, for example, just yeah. different, the different, different time. time. Yeah, what? different time. Okay, so some people ask, what about retin A? and also exfoliating agents like AHA or PHA. Ah, yeah, I don't know. This yeah. again is a great question. Because <laughs> again, I'm going to, to, to back. Mm -hmm. Most of the product with vitamin C had and still have a very acid pH. Right. Okay. If you take vitamin C in acid pH, it becomes kind of AHA, acid fruit. Okay. It has a peeling effect. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So if you choose a vitamin C product with acid pH, you can have a peeling product. Right. So if you mix peeling product with uh, retinol, with retin A, too much. Okay. Irritation. Right. Okay. But if your vitamin C product has a normal pH, no big deal. No you big can mix. I see. Okay? Interesting. That's it. Okay. It's always regarding the pH of the base. Right. Always. Okay. So to answer that question, it really depends the pH of the vitamin C. Yeah, and C not the vitamin C. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. see. Okay. So, well. And not of, of the percentage as well. Okay. No oh, so the percentage is not. No, 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 no. Okay. Still about vitamin C. Let's I hope go. you're not bored. There are a few people also who ask can we use vitamin C when there's a breakout or acne uh, on the skin? Okay. First of all, in acne, you have a different cause of acne. Mm -hmm. 
One of the causes is oxidation of your sebum. Okay. For example, when you have black heads, yes. okay, it's totally oxidation of your sebum. Yeah. Okay? So on this, vitamin C can have an effect because it's a very powerful antioxidant ingredient. Mm. Okay. Third thing. Second thing, vitamin C is, apart from acne, is very relevant for anti-age and hyperpigmentation. Okay. Now, does vitamin C is the key ingredient for anti-acne? No. Okay. It helps by antioxidation. But right. after, you must have other ingredients to cure acne. Right. Okay. But it's not, it's quite good. It's a good complementary product to acne. Okay. okay? That's so, it. When, when there's breakout, it's safe to use? Uh, yeah, it's vitamin quite C. safe to use vitamin C under the condition, again, that the texture is not an oily texture. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 For example, if you have acne and you absolutely want to use vitamin C for hyperpigmentation yeah. or anti-age or whatever, yeah. choose very light texture. Okay. For example, a gel texture, right. a serum texture. Yeah. Then it could be okay. Jadi intinya aman-aman aja sih kalau misalnya kamu lagi jerawatan pakai vitamin C, tapi kamu harus pilih teksturnya jangan yang minyak gitu ya, jangan yang oil, tapi misalnya gel gitu itu aman aja sebenarnya. Oke, okay, so next question, why does vitamin C cause breakout in some people? Which I think you kind of uh, yes, you're right that, because right? again, if people have chosen to use a traditional vitamin C product with a very acid pH then it produces a peeling effect. Yeah. And when you do have a peeling effect on your skin, the very first week or the, the two first week, you may have some people going out. It's a deep cleansing. You see what I mean? Yeah. And after, it is okay. Any very efficient anti-acne product are doing this. Mm. The beginning is not nice to see, I'm afraid. You see? But it's a deep cleansing. Okay. okay. So is it? Will you, can you call it purging? Because some yeah, people exactly, call it purging. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. You're perfectly right. right. You're perfectly right. So I guess this is why you had received that questions. Okay. So meaning that you have to continue using it, or normally, when you have a good peeling formula, do not stop after one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. You must use over one month at night. Okay. And of course. Never go under the sun when you are using peeling product. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? That's it. In any anti-acne product, when you open the direction for use, usually it is written. The first week or the two first week, you may have some people going out. Mm -hmm. It's normal. Okay. Like okay. you said, it's a big clean yeah. Okay. Jadi berhubungan dengan poin sebelumnya ya, jadi kalau misalnya memang e, produk vitamin C yang dipakai itu pH-nya itu asidik, ya itu memang bisa bikin kayak peeling gitu, jadi kayak deep cleansing gitu, jadi bisa bikin purging, makanya di sebagian orang tuh keluarlah kayak breakout gitu, karena memang dia mengeluarkan jerawat-jerawat yang memang harus keluar dari kulit kamu sebelum akhirnya kulit kamu membaik, tapi itu nggak akan kejadian kalau kamu menggunakan produk vitamin C yang pH-nya itu normal atau sama dengan kulit kita. Oke, okay, next question. Do we have to wait 40 minutes after applying vitamin C before moving on to the next step? This is from Kazama. Oh, interesting question. <laughs> Very interesting question. Do we have to, to wait 40 minutes? Yeah. Okay, I don't know which idea is behind that question. Right. Okay. Alors, you have to understand that when you apply vitamin C, whatever it is, pure vitamin C or stabilized vitamin C, the reaction with your enzyme is very fast. Okay. It meaning five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay. okay. So normally, no need to wait for. Right. Okay, because your enzyme will totally digest the ascorbic acid, the pure vitamin C, yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to my knowledge, no. This being said, maybe behind that question, I have a guess. Mm -hmm. I have a guess. Maybe, she's using a traditional product vitamin C against with acid pH. Mm. And when you apply just after a normal pH product, maybe it will break the stability of the vitamin C on your skin. You see what I mean? Okay. But if you have a normal pH with vitamin C, no negative. Besides, who has 40 minutes <laughs> or uh, more to have? It's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Skincare must be very practical. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So. so since we are talking about the correct way of using vitamin C, yeah. some people are also asking, is it true that vitamin C is best when we apply it on bare skin? This is from Livia. Honestly, whatever the skincare, uh -huh. I would say that first I am against layering. Oh yeah? Yeah, okay. we are producers of skincare and we say don't buy too much skincare. Mm. It's a, a oh, paradox. That's, that's bad news for me. <laughs> but select the right one. Okay. But select. Less is more. Right. Okay? Right. So whatever the skincare, I would advise to apply on pair skin. Okay. But this question is truly right because to the skin must digest the vitamin C and they digest with their enzyme. Mm. If you put a product before vitamin C, your enzyme will not communicate with the vitamin C. And it's a pity. So this lady, mm -hmm. I guess it's a lady because it's a very yeah. uh, relevant question. <laughs> it's a lady. Uh, she's totally right. When you apply vitamin C, it must be on a clean skin and bare skin, nude skin, in order for enzyme to work and to digest the vitamin C molecule. Yeah. Oke, okay. jadi udah jelas ya, kalau kamu nggak usah lagi nunggu 40 menit habis pakai serum vitamin C untuk ke step berikutnya lama banget, 40 menit. Katanya Cyril tadi 3-5 menit aja itu udah cukup efektif gitu ya kerjanya. Dan juga emang benar bahwa lebih baik mengaplikasikan produk dengan vitamin C itu di kulit yang setelah dibersihkan dan belum dipakaiin produk apa-apa lagi supaya kulit kamu emang benar-benar bisa menyerap vitamin C-nya. Oke, okay? so we move on to the next question. Still about vitamin C. Good. Is it safe to use vitamin C in the morning? And then another person asked, this is from Lala Yolala Arya Vitaminas Titi Andini and Pinkuhito. Do we really have to store it in the fridge? I think I know the answer to this. You know the answer. Hello, I'm going to answer you to the second question first. Yeah. Do we need to store the vitamin C in the fridge? I would say if the product is unstable, I must I buy you a friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But what we wanted to do uh, with our vitamin C booster is mm -hmm. to make a super stable product. Yeah. So, for our product, no need. Yeah. Okay. Because this is true that a classical vitamin C does not like heat, light, oxygen, mm -hmm. and water. Right. Okay. But if you succeed to stabilize it, it's like a normal product. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it safe to use in the morning? Maybe. It seems, is it safe to use under the sun? Okay. Maybe that question yeah. too. Alors, if you need, if you have to apply vitamin C, please apply it first in the morning. Okay. Why? Because when you are going outside with UV rays, with the sun, the sun is going to destroy, in 10 minutes time, 80% of your vitamin C into your skin. Oh. Okay. So the more you are taking sun, and the more you should apply vitamin C to reload in vitamin C. I see. And why vitamin C is destroyed by the sun? Because they protect your cells. Mm -hmm. And they are dying, but your cells are still living. Mm -hmm. It's a, a shield, okay? But again, under one condition. And because your product must be the same pH of your skin. Then you can apply In the morning, in the morning under the going sun. under the sun. Do you have to use sunscreen after you put uh, vitamin C? Ah, it's a, hello, it's yeah, another you have some, a very some interesting views about question. Sunscreen. Yes, because a lot of people say use sunscreen every day, all the time. I would say yes and no. Yes, if you are going under the sun more than 20 minutes. Okay, you play golf, you play tennis, you are in the beach, or you are going to make a long walk in the street sunscreen. But if it is for only 5 or 10 minutes, please, it's not needed. Okay? It's not it's, needed. It's pretty controversial. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's totally controversial. It's not needed at all. And if you ask a dermatologist, he would confirm. Why? First, you need to have some sun to produce your own vitamin D. Yeah. First things. Okay? Second things, the sunscreen Most of them, they are chemical sunscreen, okay? They are, it's a very oily ingredient, mm. okay? So to put these very chemical and oily ingredient on your face just to protect your skin for five minutes time is totally useless. So it's not the benefits, The benefits are not there, okay. okay? But again, if you are going under the sun for 15, 20, 30 minutes, 
yes, we do have license. Right. My advice, but it's my, it's our personal opinion. Less than 20 minutes, no sunscreen. More than 20 minutes, sunscreen, SPF 30. And if you have the choice, you can apply sunscreen, natural one, physical. Mm -hmm. For example, with a powder makeup. Okay, in yeah. the market you can find the SPF 30 powder makeup. Yeah, you can like a powder uh, yeah. with SPF exactly. 30. Exactly. That's enough? No, that's enough <laughs> if you are working in the street. Oh, okay. Okay, for 15, 20 minutes. Okay. If you are going to Bali, yeah. on the beach, please it's take actually. a lot of sunscreen, right. of course. Right. And do not apply another skincare. So you can apply vitamin C before, sunscreen, after, yeah. under the condition that vitamin C has the normal pH. Always, right. Always I am exactly. repeating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then it is good. And you must renew your sunscreen every two hours. Yeah. Because people must understand that when you apply your sunscreen after two hours, the effectiveness is going down, 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 down. Right. Okay. So some people used to ask us, if I apply a sunscreen in the morning, it's sufficient for all the day? Not at all. Not at all. This is why it's a nonsense to apply a sunscreen at home in the morning to protect your skin in the afternoon. Mm. It's totally useless. Yeah. It's better to apply sunscreen just before going out. Okay. Okay? Before going out. I'm afraid it's complicated. <laughs> because if you are applied makeup, yeah. my goodness, yes. what I'm going yeah, to do? Yeah, a lot of people ask me that. I too. know that, I know that. So. You take an umbrella and you walk <laughs> on the street under an umbrella. You know, it's super natural. It's not uh, layering and layering and layering. No chemical molecule on your skin, and it's better like this. I see. Sometimes less is more. Okay. So your advice is if you cannot put sunscreen all over your makeup, just take an umbrella or use a... Exactly. Yeah. Or of course, if you are swimming into the beach, if you are playing tennis, right. if you are playing golf, please yeah. use sunscreen, yeah. of yeah. course. Okay. Jadi ini soalnya agak panjang ya pembahasannya dari ngomong vitamin C sampai ke sunscreen. Tapi menarik banget intinya kalau misalnya vitamin C itu kalau emang formulanya stabil dan nggak gampang teroksidasi itu nggak perlu dimasukin ke kulkas. Terus boleh apa nggak dipakai pagi hari? Boleh. Tapi menurut Cheryl tadi kalau bisa dipakainya itu pertama gitu ya karena Begitu kita keluar dari rumah dan kena matahari, itu sebenarnya 80% dari vitamin C yang ada di badan kita tuh dirusak oleh sinar matahari tersebut. Tapi itu sebenarnya alasan kenapa kita harus terus-terusan menggunakan vitamin C, karena untuk memenuhi kebutuhan vitamin C di dalam badan kita sebenarnya gitu. So, speaking of vitamin C for our skin and our body, because you said that 80% of the vitamin C in our body will be destroyed by the UV rays, right? Absolutely. So, is it a good idea to also take vitamin C orally in, in the form of supplements or food or, you know, juices? The best would be the food. Right. Okay, rather than food supplement. Yeah. The problem of the food, the food of today is not fresh. Mm. Okay, so the concentration of vitamin C into the fruits of today mm -hmm. is uh, far less than it was in the old days. For example, an American study yeah. has compared two apples. Apple 100 years ago uh -huh. and apple of today. You know How what? did they get an apple from 100 Alors, years ago? Because, of course not, it's not possible. <laughs> okay. But they had, no, but it's a good question. I love your question and you must ask me. They had the statistics of the concentration of vitamin C 100 years oh, ago, okay. you know, on the publication. Right. So they make some tests mm -hmm. and they compare to the test of today. You know what? An apple of today contains 100 times less vitamin wow. C than one, one century times. ago, wow. 100 times. So, since the human are not able to produce their own vitamin C, we need to supply a vitamin C with food. Okay, mm -hmm. so first, if possible, try to eat organic food, yeah. if possible. Try to eat fresh fruits, okay? Not eat food, okay? Fresh mm -hmm. yeah. fruits. And secondly, you may try food supplement, mm -hmm. But you must bear in mind that when you take a food supplement, only 3% of that vitamin C from the food supplement will come to your skin. 3%. Um, okay. So it's okay, it's nice, but it's not so much. Okay, so it's not enough. So It's not enough. Yeah. So this is why we offer topical application of vitamin C right. as well. Right, I see, okay. 
interested. Jadi gitu ya, emang karena kita butuh badan kita vitamin C, jadi kalau bisa kita makan makanan yang segar, organik kalau bisa. Tapi kita boleh aja minum suplemen vitamin C, tapi kalau menurut Cheryl tadi hanya 3% aja dari suplemen tersebut atau vitamin C tersebut yang terserap oleh kulit kita gitu. Jadi memang nggak cukup sih kalau memang fungsinya itu adalah untuk melindungi sel kulit kita. Jadi harus dengan topical application juga. Alright. Wah panjang juga ya ngobrol-ngobrolnya. Sebenarnya masih banyak nih pertanyaan yang dijawab oleh Cyril. Tapi videonya kayaknya udah kepanjangan deh. Gimana kalau kita break aja dulu? Nah kalau kamu ngerasa kok pertanyaan gue belum dijawab sih gitu. Tonton aja atau tungguin aja minggu depan kita akan upload video skincare Q&A with Cyril Challenge Part 2. Siapa tahu aja pertanyaan kamu akan dijawab. Bocorannya ada banyak mengenai jerawat loh. Oke, okay? thank you for watching and see you at the next video. Bye.